Hey guys, welcome back. Let's make the shirt now. Now that we have the pants, we can make the shirt. I want to make a new fabric. I'm going to go to the fabrics here, click add. Should make one. I'm going to call it shirt and give it a color that's slightly different than white. That's easier to see. Do something like that. And this is just for display inside of Marvelous and nothing else. And again, we're going to use the polygon tool, which is H. And we're going to make something that looks like this. We're just making the shape of what the shirt would look like. And usually it looks something like this. So we can, we'll adjust all of these, of course, afterwards. Right now, we're just going to do this. Now, what I want to do is I want to kind of hide the pants to kind of in the way right now. And I don't want to have to deal with it. I can move them out of the way. That will also work. But if I also don't want to see them in the 3D view, I can right click and then we can click hide. But first I want to click deactivate because if you, if you only hide it, it will still simulate. Here we go. Deactivate pattern only. And then we'll hide it like that. Okay. That's good. Now let's go to the edit curvature tool and make the collar here. We'll make the sleeve and then I'm just going to move it like this. I can get the tangent lines. I'm also going to move this to get tangent lines because we'll make some options thing. We'll make some changes here. I want this to come down like that. Make this tangent line straight. And then this one will bring up like this. Probably bring this up a little more. And then this part will have it go in, in the armpit and leave that like that. Let's bring this in a little. Okay. Okay, that looks good. Now, I'm going to right click on it and click symmetric pattern with sewing. Hold shift, select them both, move them back. And now we'll make the back of the shirt. And for that, we just take this part, control C and then control V, place it here. I'm going to go into 3D view and rotate it 180 like that and move it back. This. If I select both of these, I can get them closer to the body. And then this one. We'll do symmetric pattern with sewing like that. Okay, that's fine. Now we can make some changes to this. The back collar is not deep. We'll just take this point, hold shift, move it up. And then in the back, it doesn't uh, go down like that. It just kind of stays straight. Maybe even bring it up like this. I think that's gonna look nicer. The rest is the same. We'll need to adjust this. These tangent lines, we'll just do this. All right, now let's stitch it together. It's a pretty simple. Segment sewing works on this. Stitch this, stitch this, and that, and then the sides, and that should be it. Let's just run this out. There we go. It's definitely too big. Let's fix that. We'll just take the points here. I want to do it this at the same time to the back and front. They're even, and we can do that by using this edit pattern tool. Select this point, and then shift click this one. And then we can just move them both together like this and then run the sim. Let it adjust. Okay, that's better. Now let's give it more subdivisions. We'll select them both, go down here and set the particle distance to 10. Also something I didn't mention in preferences in the Marvelous Designer, there's some options that we can set. If you go to the view coordinates, set the view, sorry, view controls, set them to Maya. That's going to give you navigation, same as Maya. And then there are a couple others under 3D. We can change the mesh from triangle to quad. You can change that. You can also change the gizmo from unify gizmo to divided gizmo. I don't like it because you have to hold like shift to enable it. I don't like to use that. I just leave it on unified gizmo. It works fine. That's basically it. There's nothing else we need to set here. And then the other thing you want to set is in the gizmo right here, set the gizmo to local coordinate. By default, it's on screen coordinate. But what you get is basically this. See how the gizmo is aligned to camera. It makes it really hard to rotate things. But if you change that to local, it's going to be aligned to the object, which is much easier to work with. All right, let's do another sim. All right, we get nice wrinkles in the back here. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to fix this seam. And the way we can do that is if we go into our edit sewing and then select this edge here. Right here, there's a fold strength. The fold angle is 180. That means it's flat, but the strength is only five. If we get the strength to 100, that's going to keep it flat. You want to do that to every basically seam that's supposed to be flat. Now, these corner ones, you can leave uh, at like five and they'll pinch a little bit because that's a natural seam. That's an actual seam in the fabric. 
in real life. We can leave that. And this looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with the way the shirt looks. I like how low it goes. That looks great. Now we need to, before we bring the pants back, we need to set the layer, right? We had the layer on the pants, zero for the pocket and one for the rest of the pants. But for this layer, we need to set it to two. Like that. If you want to add more stuff to the pants and you don't want to like change all the layering, you can just set this layer to like five. That'll give you extra layers to play with the pants if you want to add more detail to them. But this is fine. Now let's look at the pants here. I'm going to bring these up. Their location in 2D space does not matter at all. It's just a visibility thing. Now we can unhide it, show 3D pattern, and now I can right click on it and do a, where is it? Activate right there. Activate. Now, if I try to solve it now, because of the layering, it should bring the shirt to the front. The problem is sometimes what you get is that in the process of doing that, moving itself to the front, it can mess up the geo or the pattern. What I'd like to do is just move it over like this. We basically have our similar already done, but I just want to kind of uh, help it a little bit uh, in the simulation. I'm just going to do that. And then when we hit sim, you can see what happens. It looks great. And you can see it's even bunching up on the pants there. Now, if it's moving up too high, like we see right there, what we can do is we can fix that. Now you can leave it like this if you're not going to simulate it, but I want to simulate this. I want to take this and show you guys how to run a cloth animation sim inside of Marvelous. Now, in order for us to do that, we need to bring down the detail here. We need to bring down all of this, uh, like, uh, I'm sorry. We need to bring down the shirt with the pants. We can pin them together. And then these as well, see if full strength is a 180 and should be a hundred. Same here. This one, and then this one. And then this seam in the middle, in the, this is, that is the back. That's the seam down the middle. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the edit sewing, select it, and then make the full strength 100. This one, I want to do the same. Like that, there we go. And that's run that. All right, now let's pin some of this stuff that it doesn't move. And we can just take the tacking right here, tack, and we can click tack, and I can tack here and then tack right there and that's going to bring down the shirt i can add one here as well we can add one down add one down the middle like that and then one here there that should do it there we go now they're tacked together we can just pull this a little bit as he's moving they will stay together they won't move and also if we want to make the pants a little tighter we can by scaling everything a little bit. If I select all of the pan stuff, now you have to scale in really small increments. If you go really far increments, it will just break everything. You want to do small increments and then send it and then we'll do it again. Just want to make them a little smaller or tighter. All right. Whoops. I did not want to do that. There. You can actually undo pretty much anything inside of Marvelous, which is nice. Tuck the pocket in. All right. See? That's pretty good. Should I bring this up a little? And then same here. If I bring this a little bit higher, you can see I'm pulling on the fabric here. Then I can pull this up and then bring this back down. And then bring this down a little. There. It adds nice folds right here in the pockets, which is good. All right, let's add some extra detail. I want to add detail on the edge here, basically trim. And it's really easy to do. If you select an edge, and on your shape, you can right click on that edge and do an offset. Offset as internal line like this. And you'll get a distance so you can see the preview. We can add this, make this, let's see. I think that might be too much. Let's try 1.2. That's good. And then we'll add one here. What is that? Where am I clicking here? Yeah, offset as internal line, 1.2. Same as that one. And then let's do this. You have to watch this because see how this line is kind of uh, going a little too much. We'll, we'll adjust that, but that's fine. This internal line. Okay. The next part is we can split these all. Now, right now, it's just a line. But what I want to do is I want to split them. If I select this edge and this one, actually, because it's symmetrical, we only need to select one side. We'll select this one and then select this and this, then right click and do, you can do cut and sew, but sometimes the way it sews things together is kind of weird. I'm just going to do cut 
and then manually saw it. Uh, I'm just going to take this and move it over. It's easier to see what's happening. And I'm going to add another fabric. We can see this. This will be shirt trim like that. And we'll make it a different color. Let's make it lighter. All right. And then I can just basically drop it in. There it is. We can see it now. Looks good. Now let's stitch it all together. We'll do segment sewing. Just simple segment sewing. And then just stitch this all together. Oh, it's already stitched. Make sure you only stitch one side. I always forget that. All right, the rest should be stitched already, but we can run the sim and then see what happens. Also, we need to check the layering. Make sure that the layering stayed. Yeah, that's five. That's good. Okay, that looks good. Now, the issue that we see right here, it's because of the shape of this, because this edge is long. We can fix this simply by moving this point back like that. Same with this one. Just make it straight. Now this curve here, we're just going to make it straight. That need to make sure that this curve is smooth or equidistant. There we go. Same here. That should be it. And now we can just run the sim. There we go. That fixed it. Okay. Now let's fix this. Move it over. All right. That is good to go. We can send this back to Maya. Now, before we do that, we need to lay out UVs because if I want to send this, I want to make sure my UVs are done before I take it back into Maya and do anything with it. Because if I'm going to take it back to Maya, I'm going to texture it. I want to make sure that I'm texturing UVs that will stay this way. Right here where it says 2D panel window, click that, go to UV editor. And now we can lay this out. This piece is this side. You have to be kind of careful about like how you do this because this section right here, see the one I just selected? You can see that that's this side, but it's flipped. You got to click reverse. They should add that into Marvelous where you can see what your, if it's flipped or not, but they don't have that yet. That's okay. This one you can see needs to be flipped horizontally. We can just bring them together like that. Then this one goes here. They can snap together. This section, that's the back, right? That goes there. This one is the front on the left side. That will go here. This piece, that is this one. Just going to try to lay them out as close as possible without overlapping. And then this should be this piece. Double check. Sometimes when you're navigating here, you can move the shells. Just be careful about that. So you see how this is the wrong side. Let's flip that one. Place it here. And then this is that one. This one we need to flip. We can select this side, bring it to the, to match this one. Then we can just move it over for now. Let's do the pants. It's a little tricky to make sure that everything is lined up properly. This is, cor this is not correct because this is the center seam. This is the pockets. So we need to flip this one. And this is correct. This one is the other side. So we need to flip it because the seam down the middle needs to be there. Okay, this pocket is on this side, and that is correct, but this one needs to be flipped. Hope this isn't too confusing. It confuses me as well sometimes. Uh, okay, I didn't flip this one. There we go. But if you do it a few times, you'll start to get a hang of it and start to understand what's happening. Now, I don't, I'd like to keep the pocket symmetrical, but really doesn't matter too much. I'm just going to place them where they take up some space, something like this. Let's actually flip them this side and that side. All right. And then we need to scale this based on the largest thing. The largest thing here are these pants. If I place them here, you can see they're outside the tile. Now I can try and get everything closer together so that I don't have to scale too much. That might be good. Let's see if, okay. Now that fits. Okay, good. Just, you're going to have to constantly undo as you're doing this because you will move things by accident. I want to place this in this tile and then select this and place it here in this tile. You really don't want to scale them. So I'm just going to, there we go. Then our first row is taken up. We can, and I, I believe we're going to have more UVs than we need on the first row. We'll just use up the first row and then go to the second row. This is good. Zero one is here. That's our character. And then our clothes are going to go up here. Let's go back to the pattern window, click S. Now we need to export. The export is actually really easy. Uh, oh, also, if you want to look at the wireframe, we can. If we look at the wireframe here, this is what it looks like. Now, some people like to, some people like to retopologize because the geo is not the greatest. 
it's still all quads. There are a couple triangles, but it's not a big deal. And the thing is, this Geo is optimized for, it's optimized for simulation. I don't mind leaving it this way. Also, our tacks got messed up. We need to redo them. Let's go back to this. See how they're not right. Let's fix that. Go to edit tack. We're going to select these. Delete, delete, and then go to tack. And then we'll click here and here. I want to move them because they're right now they're a little too high. Maybe we'll see. That goes there. All right. And that's what it looks like. All right. Let's sim this. See what that looks like. The back is getting pulled down a little too much for my liking. Now we can bring this up. It's actually pretty simple using edit attack. We just take this and bring it up. And this will just bring it higher on the pants. We'll leave it where it is on the clothes there. I also don't want to tack on the pocket. I don't want it pulling on the pocket. What I'm going to do is place it here. I want to double check that's right. Yep, that's correct. That means this one has to go here. Let's adjust that. Right. Run the sim. Okay. That's pretty good. Let's adjust this a little. A little. All right. That looks pretty good. Now let's export. Now let's save again. Now turn the sim off. I'm going to select all of the clothes. Then go to, go to file. Export. Alembic. There it is. Cash. Alembic. Easy char. Clothes. Export. Save. It's going to bring this up. But this is really important to set this properly. If you don't set it properly, you're going to have a lot of issues. Now, if you're only exporting the shirt, you can weld it. I am not exporting the shirt. I'm also exporting the pants and I cannot weld it because if I weld it, it's going to create non-manifold geometry because we have a stitch in the middle of the geo. You can't do that. You can't, that creates basically like a, if you have a plane and an edge coming out of the middle of the plane, shooting an edge, that's what the kind of geo you get. We have to keep it unweld. And it's fine, but we can keep it that way. And then turn on unified UV coordinates. This will export textures as well. Not textures, UVs. You want to make sure that all of this is off. Otherwise, we'll get some textures as well. We don't want that. We just want the UVs without any of these selected. We want to make sure our scale is in centimeters. And then our export, we exported it at a thousand percent. We need to, we imported at a thousand. We need to export at 10. Now animation, we don't have any animation. I'm just going to click current frame just to force no animation, even though we don't have any and click. Okay. That's it. Let's open up Maya. I need to make sure I'm in the right project. Cache, Olympic import. And we're just going to look at the clothes. The scale looks correct. And this is what it looks like. All right. That looks great. I'm going to open up the character and then re-import. Right. The shirt that we need before I'm not going to use. I like this shirt. That looks good. And now, right now it's all one object. We need to convert this, make it uh, not one object. I'm going to duplicate, call this one shirt and this one pants. I'm going to take the shirt and select all the geo for the shirt. Now, the problem is this is what we get. I want to use the UV editor for selecting. It's really easy. We can just go in here, right click faces, right click face, drag a selection on the faces. You want to make sure that you are in the viewport when you're doing the next part, because if you delete in here, in UV editor, you're only deleting UVs, not deleting the geometry. In here, we need to click invert and then delete. And we'll delete the pants from this. Then select the pants, do the same thing. We can just select the shirt, that, and then delete it in 3D view. Now the pants are the pants and the shirt's the shirt. And you can see our UVs are done. And if we select all of the geo, we don't have any overlap. The pants live up there in the shirt. And that's it. In the next video, I think we'll make the boots. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, check some of my posts on YouTube, and I'll see you guys next time.